Hey guys, I'm Ryan Wright. Hey guys, I'm Andrew. Andrew and I are going to check out from All Time Movies, Top 5 Worst Movie Accents. Wait, before we start, take your guess on which ones or some of them are going to be in here. Just one or two. For me, Bruce Willis Armageddon, I think he's going to be in there, but that was a pretty bad accent he had, in my opinion. There has to be a Liam Neeson movie in there. Yeah, I could see that, He too, cannot. Huh? I mean, he, Liam Neeson's interesting because he can suck at accents, but do a good performance, too, you know? Yeah, of course. Let's, let's find out. Let's find out what they have to say. Hi, I'm Jamie, and these are my five worst movie accents. You sound like you're from London. <laughs> Number five, Don Cheadle, The Ocean's Truth. Really? Mm, all right, chaps. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, he's okay, he's good. Hang on to your niggas. This one is pretty funny, but it's also spread across a whole trilogy. Yeah, I think it might. Oh, I feel great. One, two, three, four. The native New Yorker was going for Cockney here. They're so pony that they've gone and blown the back up red one by one, like dominoes. Cheadle is rumoured to have requested the Cockney character called Basha Tar, which makes the result even more painful. Watch out, Dick Van Dyke. So unless we intend to do this job in Reno, we're in Barney. Barney Rubble. Trouble! Not quite Cockney rhyming slang. Number four. Michael Caine on Deadly <laughs> Ground or Cider House Rules. Now we have a Cockney actor, the one and only Michael Caine, trying to be Texan. Who cares? We do. Cut! F*** these animals stick. Bring me a washcloth. His New England accent in the Cider House Rules isn't much better, and he won an Oscar for it. Doubtless you will let me know when you're gonna find a more gratifying life. Kane is an absolute legend. He should just stay away from accents. Or give Don Cheadle some tips on Cockney rhyming slang. Number three. Tom Cruise, <laughs> far and away. Also from New York, Tom Cruise is playing a 19th century Irish immigrant alongside his then wife, Nicole Kidman, who's actually Australian and also has a pretty bad Irish accent here. Feels sweet as far as the eye can see. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is my destiny. If it weren't for me, Fong Boy, you wouldn't even be here! Oh, well. If it weren't for me, Miss Hyen... Ah, I forgot how horrible this was. He sounds like a leprechaun. I keep expecting him to start selling cereal. <laughs> Tell me you like my hat. You're not wearing a hat. Say it. Say you like my hat. They're always after me, lucky charms. How is your Irish <laughs> accent these days, Tom? Oh, it's fine right now. I'm still not convinced. But he's not the only actor with a terrible Irish accent. I don't know which one's oh, yours. Oh, yeah. You'd best ask the doctor yourself. Well, I don't blame you. Number two, Anne Hathaway, One Day. She probably wins for the most annoying shit accent. <laughs> Although born in Brooklyn, she's going for Yorkshire here. Leeds, to be specific. Actually, we have. Several times. Oh, have we? You gate crashed my birthday party, called me Julie, and spilled red wine down my top. Why can't she just choose one bad accent and stick to it? Not ricochet between shit and shitter accents. Sorry, I'm not good at this. It's just whenever I go to bed with someone, I always end up either laughing or weeping. And it could be nice to go for something in between. Next time you take on a beloved book character with a different accent than your own, get off the couch and hire a professional. Number one, Keanu Reeves, mm. Dracula. I'm putting Keanu as number one of this list because he's a repeat offender with a nice multinational portfolio of shit accents. Devil's advocate for that. Oh, God, that yeah. man is fucking an animal. Southern. Yeah, there it is. And last but not least, English oh, yeah. gent. If I may inquire, what in fact happened to Mr. Renfield in Transylvania? Why can't Keanu just stick with being a stoner? Or dodging bullets? Oh, break. And before I go... Here are a few others I just couldn't leave out. Oh, good. You got something to say, mate. You say it. Yeah. Put the bunny back in the box. You're a good model. I was thinking about that. He calls me a barbarian. The humans have played their hand. Mm -hmm. Will, do you think that the oh, sheriff will give everything back after I'm gone? There's so like no the accent there. The accent you heard. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I remember when Robin Hood came out. Fucking Kevin Costner, everyone was saying he can't do a British accent. You hear it, you're like, there's like no British accent Nothing. in there. thing. It was pretty fucking horrible. But you gotta admit, that's one of the best casts, that movie. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. And it came out around Robin Hood and Men in Tights. 
Yeah. Wasn't uh, Men in Tights a, Men, a spoof? Yeah, Men in Tights was 94, I believe that was Mel Brooks, and then yeah. I think the one we just saw with Kevin Costner, I believe that was 91, I think that was three years before that, I could, or ni 92, 91. It was, it was like, oh yeah, sorry, it was spoof inspired, there's yeah. even a joke about yeah. how, um, what was the main actor's name? Uh, Carrie El Elvis? Yeah, oh. where he was like, even, he's like, I could do a British accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. cool. The Don Cheadle one doesn't bother me that much. Yeah, never, I was like, I was okay with it. I, I agree. If if it never personally bothered me and it never took me out of the film once, and I actually, he's one of my favorite characters in, in the in the trilogy, even though I didn't really care for the Ocean's 12, I love 11 and 13, but he's one of my favorite characters of in the in the group. I agree, that personally never bothered me. Again, more the Bruce Willis one in Armageddon bothers me way more than that one. Yeah, so. I'm surprised that wasn't on the list. Yeah, not even honorable mention. That was interesting. Michael Caine. That's the, that's the thing. There, there are certain actors, like I said, Liam Neeson and Michael Caine. He's, he's another actor who can't really do accents, but they can still give a strong performance. When you look at this list of accents, You'll see actors who get so focused on the accent, they'll do a shitty job, and they're so focused on it that they're not even really doing the performance. Yeah. Dude, I can't believe they bagged on Alfred. Are you kidding me? They did. Yeah. <laughs> That's, what are they doing, man? That's Bruce Wayne's butler. Like, and how many Oscars has he won? Uh, I know he won for Han and Her Sisters, and uh, by the way, fun fact, he did not attend the Han and Her Sister, or the Academy Award. He was filming a, a wonderful film called Jaws the Revenge. Oh, really? That's why he missed the Academy Awards that year to accept his Oscar. He was filming Jaws the Revenge. And they say Cider House Rules as well? Yeah, the Cider House Rules, I think that was 1999 that came out? Yeah. It's Michael Caine, he never takes, even if his accent is a little off, he's such a good actor that he never takes me out of it, even, you know, if his accent's a little off here and there. I will say, though, uh, even though we're on the worst accents, the best accent I've ever heard personally, Leonardo DiCaprio on the Blood Diamond. That was amazing. That was amazing. South African. Oh my, he's so hard to do. I, and I was thinking the whole movie, I know this guy is from L.A., he is completely South African. He yeah. is convincing me. What a brilliant performance. It's, it's amazing. It's funny how they show like an honorable mention of, of him in Gangs of New York. Yeah, when, that was funny. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the greatest accent, yeah. but I remember like if you look at DiCaprio's point. career, there was Gangs of New York, Catch Me If You Can came out around the same exact time. Yeah, same year. And same year. Yeah, same, I think it was the same month too, actually. Something like that. Yeah, they're both 2002. I remember that. So they both come out, and then it was like, all right, DiCaprio is not so pretty boy anymore. He's starting to become a man, aviator. People were still like, he's getting there. And then Departed, people oh, were like, he's the shit. Oh. And then Blood Diamond solidified it. Do you remember, too, they couldn't nominate him like, for, both. for both. Yeah. Because they wanted to, but they couldn't. He so. should have. He should have. He oh, should have. Absolutely. Departed is is actually my favorite performance. I, I agree. Yeah. Departed is my, and, and again, I know I said the uh, the, the accent for uh, for Blood Diamond was my favorite, but performance, I completely yeah. agree, Departed was my favorite one. I loved how, you know, how greedy that movie was and how, in his performance in it, oh, so good. I love Fantastic. that movie. Oh, the Tom Cruise oh, and Nicole this Kidman. This is funny. I've seen this movie a few times. Oh, man. I forgot how bad that was. Like, I saw it when I was a kid. Yeah. And now, looking at this now, I'm like, this is horrible. Do you know who directed the film, by the mm -hmm. way? Ron Howard. No yeah, way! 1992, Ron Howard. And by the way, I remember when I saw this, I was like five or six years old, the first thing that stuck out to me was Tom Cruise's awful Irish accent. You came back from the dead to tell me I'm odd? Like, yeah. Oh, God. Like, it, dude. It geez. sounds like the most stereotype. They're after my potatoes! Yeah, like, like, it's so yeah, stupid. I was, it, what that guy said, I was like, is he going to sell me some cereal soon? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for it. And Nicole Kidman, pretty bad, too. Yeah, it's like, this is the Eyes Wide Shut prequel. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cameron Diaz in Gangs in New York. No, that's an exception for me because I'm like, she does a good job in it, yeah. though. You know, like, yeah. she's not someone who is the most seriously taken actress, and then Scorsese puts her in this, and she does a great job. Yeah. Even though the accent, accent isn't that good, the performance is still good. Absolutely, I completely agree. If, if the accent isn't always, you know, as obviously I prefer, you know, an authentic good accent, but you know, if the performance is very good, I agree it doesn't take me too much out of the film. There's some bad accents. I, I feel like Taken should have got it mentioned, to be honest. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. That's a fun movie. Oh, it's a great. Movie. Liam Neeson great movie. is awesome in it. I love that movie but so much. But at one point, one. he's pretending to be a French officer who's actually an American with an Irish accent. You know, it, it got a little convoluted there. But <laughs> so yeah, it's not the greatest. Fucking accent. I'm surprised that wasn't on the list. I, I agree. Or at least an honorable mention. And Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway, because it's the two ones that he chose, it's number two and one, Anne Hathaway and Keanu Reeves. And both actors, it's weird. Anne Hathaway has a lot more respect from like critics, 
But amongst audiences, she seems to kind of be hated. Oh yeah, remember what? Do you remember the reaction when she was cast as Catwoman? Oh yeah, oh, my people God. were pissed. And I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie. When it happened, I was like, you know what? Christopher Nolan picked Heath Ledger. I trust him. I'm gonna see how this. I'm gonna see the film. If I personally don't like it afterwards, I'll let it be known. But I trust this guy and his decisions. And she, I thought she, even though I don't personally like that film, The Dark Knight Rises, and I'm the biggest diehardest Batman fan, I. Personally, thought she did a great job in that she film. She was a good Catwoman, and I thought I thought she did great. But no, that was very interesting. To see I didn't see the movie they mentioned here. I didn't um, see that either. I heard it was pretty bad. Yeah, I, heard, I, I never heard. saw, it, but the accent. It, I mean, as we were watching it, I thought, yeah, yeah, I guess not a great accent. But Keanu Reeves, oh god, he sucks at accents. Oh god, yeah. Like, the first movie I saw with an accent was Devil's Advocate, and I couldn't believe oh, what I, I was hearing. I know, that movie was taken. I was like, dude, go back to Surfer accent. Dude, yeah, please, awful. go back to Surfer accent. Please, you're taking Just, me out of the picture, yeah, man. Because he had the Surfer accent with a slight southern touch. Oh, it. yeah, I know. I was like, dude, grab the surfboard already. They even show a moment of his French accent, but I think that was from a comedy, so I don't really... Yeah. I'm not bothered by that, because it's a comedy. I, I find that more funny than bad. But no, I mean, Keanu Reeves is... He's one of those actors who, as of recent, started getting better. After The Matrix, there was a couple of big movies, whatever, but didn't do well. But he was started doing, like, indie flicks. And he, I think he became a better actor through there. And then his last big film was John Wick. And he was great in John... Like, so much fun, that I was movie. like, this is not the Keanu Reeves I remember. Yeah, <laughs> like, movie, this is a great that performance. That movie was such a pleasant surprise, and he was so good in it. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is... I like this Keanu Reeves. I Ma want more of this. Matrix is, like, my favorite movie, but my favorite Keanu Reeves performance is probably John Wick. So he he's evolved. Me, personally, I... The John Wick one, it's point definitely break. the point break. Point I, break. I love that movie so much. It's such a... such. I, I grew up with that movie. That's Catherine Bigelow. She was married to James Cameron. So I think it was his second wife. And I think James Cameron's actually the executive producer for that film. I love Point Break. That accent uh, was perfect for Keanu Reeves. I can pack him on that one. Um, oh, yeah, and, man. Devil's and him and, Yeah, and him and Patrick Swayze. Uh, dude, they were awesome together. And but um, anyway, yeah, that's a fun list. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. You can follow Andrew on Twitter at that name he has. Agor711. I'm very good at remembering that. And you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Vine, and Periscope. Because if we get more followers, we can make even more product placement money. <laughs> Yaha Al Robe the Pain. How do I get a shout out exactly? Do I message you or post it? Well, you're gonna get one right now, my friend, because you have asked on the shout out page. That's that simple. Yaha Al Robe the Pain. You know, that's actually a kind of a sex maneuver. Yeah, I'm actually impressed with how how you got that name down so perfectly on the first try. That was impressive, man. You read a lot of names on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And I could be completely wrong. But Yaha Arobe the Pain, um, that is a type of position where, um, like, you, you, I can't say anything about you because of your profession, but I can talk about you, Yahe, from whatever I want to say. What that is, um, Andrew, just so you know, is when a man stands upside down and then the woman urinates on his face while she pulls his penis, causing the pain. Sounds like a scene from Not Another Teen Movie. Oh wait, no, she cra that, I remember he crapped on her chest, it wasn't pee, my bad. Oh yeah, but the Yaha Al Robe, the pain too, is when you crap on their face. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, let's hope you're not a kid, let me confirm this real fast. You're totally a kid. Um, listen, I didn't mean any of that. But in the future, if you want to piss or crap on a girl's face, you do it. Don't let your parents manipulate you into not doing what you want to do. I crap on girls now, I don't do that. That's disgusting. You're a pervert.